Hi, we're Rose City Kings, and you're watching 1019 Kink Radio in the Skype Live Studio. Rose City Kings in the Skype Live Studio. My goodness. You can get up and dance if you want. There's enough room in here for all of us to get up and dance. Fantastic. Good day. Hey, welcome to my work, brother. Thank you. Glad oh, to be here. Are you kidding me? This is great. A personal and a professional disclosure. Each and every one of these people up on the stage is a friend of mine, so if this interview seems a little bit unprofessional, it might go that way. <laughs> you know? <laughs> All right, well, let's get deep into the... Co what is it about you that I love so much? I think it's the authentic energy. Uh, it is! He was right! See? Brother, I love it. You know, it's also anybody get up on stage and play a hubcap. <laughs> That's great. Tell me all about that, man. That that girl probably means a lot to you. It does. It, this was a guitar that uh, I had the idea for. I used to play all metal guitars, and they were feedback problems on stage. And I, uh, there's a great guitar builder here in Portland named Saul Cole, K-O-L-L, -L, Cole Guitars. And I talked to him about making me a guitar uh, that was a fat Les Paul-style body but was solid that wouldn't feed back. And I was going to get a Cadillac hubcap, and I started looking around, and I, I saw this is a 1956 Mercury. Merc, yeah. And it, is, it, it just said everything. Mercury being the messenger of the gods seemed perfect. Yeah. Mercury blues, a whole bunch of good stuff. Yeah. Hey, here we go. Rose City Kings. And so many of these guys have been in other great bands that I've loved over the years. Too Loose. Uh, you had one of the coolest band names ever. I Can Lick Any Son of a Bitch in the House was the name of the band. <laughs> so I just I got to say that if I can. So introduce Rose City Kings with us here today. Yeah, starting on my right, phenomenal harmonica player, probably one of the most original sounding harmonica players you'll find, David Lipkin. Yeah. And uh, my drumming partner for many, many years now, a guy who keeps us all together, Mr. Gary Keeney, handsome Gary Keeney. Yeah. And one of the newest additions to the band, uh, and she really rounds out the band and gives us a great energy, Katie Oberg on vocals and percussion. And the guy, when Rose City Kings first started back in 2002, it uh, started at the Shaughnessy's house, and that's Tim Shaughnessy on the bass. Many years later, he's now the bass player in the band. And my musical collaborator for got to be eight years or more now, nine now, it keeps on going up. Oddly. A fantastic piano player, a real Louisiana treasure, Steve Karen on the piano. This new album is fan I've really loved each and every one. So I'm not going to sit here and lie to everybody. Oh, this one is so good. It's so much better than all the others. But it is. It's a tight effort. I can tell you really worked hard. And without bringing too much studio to it, that's, that's the leadoff track, right? Yes, it That's is. That's the leadoff track, yeah. One Early Morning. Yeah. Um, explain the situation. We talked about it in the CD Room of Love over at my house over a bottle of McCarthy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but tell everybody how much work that really did go into this new album. Well, it was a lot of work. Most of the songs were actually written uh, while I was on vacation. This, the writing part of it came fairly easy. Uh, we actually, on the album, we also feature a song from Katie, and we do a Howlin' Wolf song uh, written by Willie Dixon. The other parts, uh, we recorded uh, the basic tracks at Jimmy Bott's Studio Rose Leaf Recording, which is a great place if you're a young band uh, or even an experienced band. You should call Jimmy up because it's really reasonable. And as a producer, I've got to look for that. I have some engineering background myself, and so I have a lot of the tools to do the finishing of the album. So uh, we did part of it there and then uh, the rest of it over at uh, my studio. And then... Uh, Mixed by the great Larry Crane at uh, Jackpot uh, Recording Studios. Very cool. And so where is this one going to take you? I mean, I know you guys are playing this Friday at the Laurel Thirst, right? we got a nighttime gig at the Laurel Thirst. If you dig what you're seeing right now, come on out Friday. Let's do this at the Laurel <laughs> Thirst. It's going to be fun. Because you guys, I mean, even a CD release night over at the, the Rose Room. Yes. You guys can have a floor packed all night long. And there's not many bands that can do that, but you guys bring it. So I want to I want to thank you for what you've done for the Portland scene. Each and every one of you guys uh, being out here. What else should I be asking you, man? I, I know where this guy's ticklish, so I really don't know what, <laughs> what questions I should be asking. But, uh, all right, you said back in 02. It was a different band at that time. Right. And uh, we went through uh, the Colvane. In fact, yes. Karen told me today, she goes, you're going to, uh, Colvane, you're going to be interviewing Colvane? I said, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're going to be doing that. So uh, what, brother, there were some years that I didn't get to see you. And you know right. how much I love seeing you. Yeah. What brought you back? How come... Well, it was actually, I, I took a hiatus is what you're referring to. I left music for three years. I had some 
health problems and some mental exhaustion that I just needed to take some time off. And it ended up being about three years. And it was actually my wife's birthday party. And she said, you know, I asked her what she wanted. It was one, I won't say which birthday it was, but it was, it was a significant birthday. And she said, I'd like to see you play again. And yeah, it was, and I said, well, I'll call the guys. And I start calling people and they're like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. And the next thing you know, we're playing at the Blues Festival and that's the show. And this is the Blues Festival here. This is a great blues town. Um, and the Blues Festival is like the, the crowning jewel of that. And so it was a great experience. And after the show, we all had such a great time. I said, you, you, everybody wanted to keep doing it. So uh, we're loving what we're doing. And I think that's, that's a great thing. You so know? after wanting to make music again, how long did it take before this album was finally put together? Was that about a year in the process of doing it? Uh, maybe a little less than that, but, but close. I, I mean, I wrote the songs, and then we decided to make an album. So I think from the time we uh, uh, decided to record the album, it was less than a year. Right. And so like making that album probably had to have been, if you said you had some mental exhaustion, or personal therapy was it what was it was? Great. It was great. It was great. That's the thing is I just, I've always, I, music is in me. It's got to come out. I love it. I missed it. That's what I discovered, you know, being away from a while. So it's great. And these guys are all my dear friends, and I love them, and it's the best thing to be able to play music with them. Not a band put together by corporations. I like that. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Good. All right, my last question. When are we going out for a drink again? As soon as we can. All right, let's That's do a, that. Is that a good answer? Right after your, right after your last song. <laughs> All right. All right, do you me. have the uh, CD here? We do. You got do merch? Have, I don't know. Karen? Karen's got it. All right, right his lovely there. wife Karen is going to be talking to you. She's going to be bringing up a, a guitar soon enough. Yeah. A Love So Strong, the new album, Friday at the Laurel Thirst. Guys, we got him today at the Skype Live studio. It is Rose City Kings. Thanks, Thank you, buddy. Steve. All right.